Hi guys, welcome to another game week of the Premier League review. This week has been like the Boxing Day, last day after Boxing Day game week. We've had a lot of games this week. We've had five draws, which is quite a lot to be honest. Like I wonder what betting odds you probably would have got on that. Probably quite good odds. Um, yeah, um, we've there's been quite a few goals. I think we had nine goals on the Sunday and four, seven, eleven, twelve. 14 on the Saturday. Anyway, we're going to jump straight in with the Saturday action. With the first game being Leicester versus Manchester United, finishing in a 2-2 draw. We're just bad. Let's try and wait this out. Man United trying to push for a title. Probably wanted three points there. Like Oli said, I think said after the game, they really should be deserving. Well, not deserving, but getting three points in games like that. Leicester, however, going for top four. Really trying to cement themselves in that top six mould now. Smashing it. Another good, another good point. You know, it's Man United. They're on good form. Playing well. They get they get a point, I guess. Maybe could have got more. I don't know. But, you know, they've de Brendan Rodgers and his letter side will definitely take a point there. And now we go to Fulham versus Southampton. Now, that's that's a game. That's a good, good point for, for Fulham. Southampton are firing right now. Firing all guns blazing. However, they did take a loss to Danny Ings last week or the week before. So, a draw for them... It's probably well, not the result they want because Fulham are down right in the relegation areas and Southampton are a lot higher up. Going for Champions League, Europa League, sort of them sort of hopes, trying to get into them sort of spots, but probably falling down now with their recent form. Um, but yeah, it's a good point for Fulham, not so for Southampton, but I'm sure they won't let them get them down. And Scott Parker's men will take that, have, have a very happy boxing day. Now we had um, Aston Villa versus Crystal Palace. Palace conceding seven to Liverpool the week before, so no surprise here when they lost 3-0 to a Villa side, which has been inconsistent, but yet consistent. Like, they've, played, they've put in some really good performances this year, and then other weeks they've been absolutely awful. So, you know, but they have been... Con they've put in some really good consistent runs, but they've gone really bad consistent runs. So it makes their season inconsistent, but they have moments of consistency, if that makes sense. Anything of what I'm talking there, or is it just complete waffle? But... Big three points for Villa. Palace really should would have hoped to get more out of that game because they do have players that can get moments of wonder. Like Andros Townsend's great goal against City last year. Zaha does it a lot of weeks of the year where he gets puts together a really good performance and gets them the points. And you know, I thought Crystal Palace perhaps def better defensively than to lose three goals to Villa. It's Arsenal level. That's really poor. Uh, <laughs> anyway, now we're going to move on to Sheffield United versus Everton. Everton getting an early goal. Or was it an early goal? I think it was an early goal. I can't quite remember. But they've got a goal and they held on to Sheffield United, who remain on a very small amount of points in the league. At this rate, they probably may even have one of the lowest points totals in league history. It's not going well for Chris Wilder's men. The question is really, how long does... I know he did so well last season, but does Chris Wilder lose that job? Does he Does he hold that job? Does, do, who, do, who, does, who does come in to replace them? And Everton move it up into second in the league, I think. Yeah, second in the league under Carlo Ancelotti. Where he's taken them in a year is unbelievable. Like, I wouldn't even consider Everton top eight last year. They may have finished there, I can't quite remember, but they definitely weren't playing at that standard for a large amount of the season. And now they're in the top eight. Well, they're, they're second in the league, so... Calvert-Lewin's firing. Richarlis is looking, looking good. He's in playing the new system. Their midfield is rejuvenated. Really, really good signs. As in, they didn't have Digne or um, Richarlison, or um, Hamas Rodriguez this week as well, and they still managed to win. So, good result in that circumstance. Three points for them, and then going over to the Etihad with Manchester City beating Newcastle 2-0. Pretty standard result there, to, to be honest. Expected Man City score is probably worth 10 times more than New... Probably not, but you know what I mean? They consider around more than Newcastle, three or four times more, and they've done the job there. 2-0 for them. Moving them into a comfortable league position, you would say, with especially, I think they've still got the game or two games in hand or something, so you could really expect City to some out the title charge on here, especially as Liverpool have been dropping points here and there. And now we go to the interesting game that I watched. It's Arsenal versus Chelsea. It's the London derby. It's what everyone wrote us off. Everyone said, nah, 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 Arsenal ain't got a chance. And then luckily, COVID came along and said, yeah, we're going to take away your rubbish players. 
that are really been letting down side, particularly one rubbish player, Willian, who's just been poor all season and getting away with average performances. And I personally believe it's because of his stupid agent who's got something to deal with the club, which means Mikel is afraid to drop him. He's awful. He hasn't put in a single good performance in my eyes to even deserve to start. So I'm so happy when I saw the youngsters starting against Chelsea. Uh, well, I was a bit worried because they're really inexperienced, but I had... I, I was excited, you know, it's something new. And to see my favourite player, uh, as you guys know on this channel, Gabriela Martinelli starting, was fantastic, especially after a little bit, little bit worrying after his uh, um, half-time substitution in the Carabao Cup due to his injury. But he was back and the youngsters were firing from the from, from minute off. Really, really good play from the fullbacks offensively today. Bellerin and Tierney had absolute... I, I want to see how much distance they covered. They covered absolute yards. Back and two, back and two, back and two. The same with Martinelli. His press was insane. The, just the constant pressure from Arsenal really, really put a, quite a lackadaisical Chelsea side on the back foot with an early Lacazette penalty. was a bit... was really quite soft. But, you know, you've got to take them sometimes. Um, he just got the wrong side. Tierney got the right the, well, the right side of him, but the wrong side for Reese James, leading to some sort of, not really Reese James' fault. It was a slight tap and he's gone down and we've got the penalty. You know, if he doesn't go down, pundits are probably saying, why didn't he go down? He probably gets a penalty there. So, you know, it's just what happens, isn't it? Um, Lacazette scores that well, takes it really well. And then <laughs> I'm watching the re-kick. I'm sitting there in the game and I'm thinking... Why is Gren Jacket? No, don't shoot, don't shoot, Grenny. And then he, he just goes and hits it right into the top corner. And it, it is a bloody good free kick. And I'm, um, yeah. Anyway, that was class, to be honest. Chelsea were really, really quite poor. Like, they didn't really have. It was like 87th minute until they just shot on target. Really not what Frank wants out of his side. Because they are a really good side. They just couldn't obviously get running today and they obviously didn't get running in their uh, previous away games that they've played this in the recently and then um, obviously Saka scored an absolute worldie whether he meant it or not no one knows but obviously you've got to claim his footballer or just you're a bottle drum like a Spurs player called Harry Winks he doesn't claim it um, but he claimed it the <laughs> guy said he saw him off his line oh that's proper cheeky um, but yeah uh, we take that, and then um, Chelsea came back, had a really good um, five ten minute spell towards the end where they could have really got back into it. It was a good goal from Tammy Abraham where he sort of like chested it in, good movement, really good run from Callum Hudson Odoi to originally create that chance after a great pass from Mason Mount. Um, but that was three one. Then we gave away a penalty stupidly, but Chelsea were really going for it. Then Leno saved the penalty because Jorginho did a stupid little hop skip. Oh wait for me to dive. Oh he didn't dive and you pass it straight to him. So, yeah, when we won that game 3-1. We're still in 15th, but it's a good win. <laughs> it's better to win him than lose him. Now we're going to move on to Sunday with... We're going to start with Leeds-Burnley, an early Patrick Bamford penalty. Slotted that one away. Pretty boring game, to be honest, but Leeds doing their thing. Quite rare clean sheet for Leeds, but it is against Burnley, so I'm not really surprised. Oh, well, Arsenal didn't keep a clean sheet against Burnley. Yeah, shut up. We're rubbish. But Leeds get the three points there. Really good for them. Marcelo Bielsa's side looking to hopefully retain their place in the Premier League and move up the table. Um, over to West Ham versus Brighton. Now this, is, this is a bit of an interesting one because West Ham were on some really good form this year. So to lose to Brighton was really quite shocking, to be honest. Well, not to lose to Brighton, draw to Brighton, sorry. But Brighton have not... They're in the relegation battle. So I was thinking West Ham were going to win that to so it's like 2-3-1. But 2-2 two, two in the end. But Brighton do play good stuff. So, you know... Um, yeah, that just happened to be the draw. So that was 2-2 two, two for them. And then Liverpool versus versus West Bromwich Albion. That was 1-1. One, one. Not great for Liverpool, was it? I was talking to a Liverpool fan. He said it was absolutely atrocious. Really quite boring to watch, to be honest. So, you know, Sam Allardyce doing his thing. Got a point against Liverpool. You know what I mean? That's a point against Liverpool and a point against City now for West Brom. Picking up the points in the big games. You wouldn't expect them to get anything from. So, that's good for them, I guess. Um, and now... My favourite game. Oh, Tottenham, you've absolutely done it again. Liverpool drop points. You're trying to win a title. Well, you want you this your friends and your fans were chirping about. We're gonna win the title, man, man, man. Yeah, you said you were gonna do it. Liverpool drop points literally before you play, and then you go and concede an 87th minute goal. Are you kidding me? You drop two points again. Wolves have been a poor side this year. Compared to what... Because they always kick on late in the league. They always kick on late in the season. They always kick on late. This is poor. Like, I don't know how the game went. I didn't watch it. I don't care about Tottenham enough to watch it. But 
For, to not seal out that game, especially when you score so early, scored in the first minute, you don't seal out that game. What are you doing? You're gonna, it's always going to happen. They've got pace in the attack. They play five at the back. It's Wolverhampton Wanderers. They're on their way back. Sorry. Um, and they scored. 1-1. One, one. So, you know, good point for Wolves. Bad point for Spurs. But I guess Mourinho will still take it because it's a point away from home. Molyneux, you quite a tough ground to go to. But in my opinion, they bottled that, really. Again, just like in Spurs' character. But we move. Um, yeah, that's been this round of Premier League, pr Premier League games. I would say it'd be a while until I see you next. But the next round starts tomorrow. So we're going to have a video probably coming on the Tuesday, I would say. Tuesday evening after the second round of games. Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe. Do all that good stuff. And check out the other videos. There's a playlist as well if you want to check out all the Premier League prediction stuff and all that lot, sort of lot. In the not in the description, but it's on my channel. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.